welfare. We're given a little bit each month. And we will never bite the hand that feeds us. We are kept passive with that little welfare check every month. We're never going to fight back because now we're dependent on it. We've lost, we've sold our independence for a tiny little welfare check. You want to stop the Afghanis from fighting us? Give them welfare. $305 a month each. And they will just settle down and be passive and be like this for the rest of their lives, waiting for that little bit of money to show up. All of the enemies that Canada and the United States have around the world, those extremely poor people, just give them welfare. They'll never fight you again. And that's us. And it wasn't just that they offered it to us. It wasn't just they came and put it on the table. We were forced to take it. My dad died when I was eight years old. He was a trapper and a fisherman. He came from Sweden. And when he got to northern Saskatchewan, northern Saskatchewan looks like Sweden. So when he got up there, he must have felt like he was at home. And he integrated into the Aboriginal community and trapped and fished. And then he died. 1965, and my mother took over trapping and fishing, and she was really good at it. Imagine 1965, 1966. She's getting 100 muskrats a day. Muskrats sell for between five and eight dollars a piece. She's making five to eight hundred dollars a day. She embarrassed the men. The government had a program where you could get grants to get windows and doors for your house. And we lived in an old house. She went and applied for that grant. They asked her how much money she made and how she made it. And she told them you know, from trapping. They said, what do you do with your children when you're on the trap line? And so she told them, I take them with me. And every spring, she took us out of school for a month and went and lived up the trap line. And it was beautiful. And we ate muskrat tails every day. We're outside, we're healthy, we're learning stuff. And I'm 10 years old and I'm trapping. Got a few traps, learning how to shoot a 22. And it was just beautiful. But when they found out she was taking her kids out of school, they told her, You can't do that. You have to move to Larange and go on welfare, or we'll take your children away. Now you tell a woman in 1966-67 you're going to take her children away. You tell an Aboriginal woman that when she looks around and sees all of the children being taken away. The 60s scoop. She'll do anything you say. We we'll move to Larange on welfare. And I learned what poor meant. I was 10 years old. Before that, we'd been rich. We had everything we needed. We could go trapping and get food, go down to the river and set a net. We had gardens. We were independent. We had as much as anybody in our community and more than many of them. And then we went to Larange and went hungry. I remember Post office was on strike. Welfare check didn't come. We we're little boys. Mum called us in for supper. The table was set. Three boys, three plates. On each plate was a piece of bread with gravy on it. My mother was almost crying. She said, I'm sorry. That's all there is. And there was no plate for her. We ate 
quietly. When we finished, we got up and put our plate in the sink. We never said anything. Just went outside. There was a mall, no sun. We never went hungry. We had lots. We had so much, we fed other people. <laughs>